Hey Dave, Jared Campbell spoke at this past week's New York State FC Slate State Conference for the keynote, and he had this exercise where everybody in the audience raised their right hand as high as they could. He then asked everyone to raise their hand up even higher, like another two inches, and most people could do it. Then he had one of the state officers up front near the seats stand next to him. He then asked for two more feet, and Jason said he couldn't do it. And of course he was right, until Jared gained his permission to sit up next to him and side lift him another two feet up into the air. What I want to focus on is that we live in a time where we're always asked to do more and more and more. Doing everything to the best is kind of scary. We learn to hold back a little bit because the more we begin to give, the more is asked of us and we're all not perfect machines. Another thing that happens to us in this dynamic is we begin to see everything as a have to instead of a get to. Have to is mostly compliant and green into us. There's not really a lot of it, but humanity's game added to life adds more of it. This is usually the one we dread. Get to is different. It's hard mentally. It grows and expands. It's experiential and varied, and it really affects the have to. But get to also has a downside. It takes personal effort and work there's usually not a right answer for it, and it takes this sort of effort and want to do a play approach. So which one should be at the center of our lens or the most prioritized? I honestly think we should take the best of both, like being a kid. Though. What we see as play, we will want to do more of. What we see as work, we will want to do less of or enough of. I think a distinction between the both of them might not even be worth it sometimes. Sometimes my default is just to choose to deeply care about things around me and see how that manifests. To prioritize with enough care, which reminds me of the big rocks first analogy. This reminds me of your point on reasonable standards, which is that any creative endeavor can be prioritized enough. I can sing in church and contribute without leading it. It's about the priorities and changes sought to make, whether leader or follower. Defining enough might be more important than defining best. And we all live more than enough because we can't do everything. We need help and trust. There's a reason the best in the world is so rare, right? It's often a specific best in some kind of art or change or accomplishment, even if it's long-term small contributions back to back. Jared's point on the cooperative effort is that we can do more together than apart. This makes get to really rewarding because synergy is really remarkable. A kind word to someone may have a more central and positive impact long-term, especially if it's given than if I just decide right now to go do a push-up on the floor. I awarded some bronze, silver, and gold medals during my evaluation for star events at this past conference. And let me tell you, Dave, it seems like the kids that treated their work as grateful play and a unique opportunity opportunity to learn, put more effort in, and want gold more of the time than the kids that possibly dreaded the creativity and work they had to put into doing their project. This reminded me of Seth's TED Talk from 2012 with the hand raising example, so I'm going to link that in the doobly doo if you're curious. It's so good! Merging work and play matters to me. Work and fun can be one because it's all about how we choose to see it. Have a great day, and I'll see you on Thursday.